Gary, uh, interesting response, judging me um, for my yes to the uh, creation of a uh, world inhabited by vaguely deficient human beings, people that are more deficient than us deficient human beings are. Well, I'll put it this way. You misunderstand the context of your own question, and I don't think that you actually understood that when you posed it to me. Because what you said was, you're standing right now in front of a button. What do you do? Okay, i got to do something. <laughs> i, I got to push it or not push it. Um, because if I push the button, something happens. If I don't push the button, something happens. <laughs> uh, even in, in this context, nothing is something. Um, because it's essentially that's the decision, that's the, the, the process of existing in this world, whether we like it or not. I have to push that button in one form or another every second of my life. I have to decide whether I'm going to look left or look right. I have to, or even I have to sort of cope with the fact that this decision has been made for me deterministically. It really doesn't matter whether or not it's deterministic or free will in nature. One way or another, I have to cope with this, uh, with what's going on, with what's whizzing past me all the time. Uh, the, you know, the causal chain, the thing that people seem to think is quite, you know, neat to uh, look into in you know determinism, but I don't think people quite grasp what the implications of either determinism or free will are, uh, because we're in that thing. You know, when you when you look at the determinism versus free will thing, you tend to sort of look at it from the outside. But no, we're we're at you know we're on the inside of this thing. We are it in many ways. We are the causal chain. So. Um, it's again. You've got two doors in front of you. Okay. This is this is how I essentially the human condition is. Uh, one door says "damned if you do," the other one says "damned if you don't." Okay. You have the choice. Which door are you going to open? Oh, by the way, there's a cartoon down in the lake bar there. It's uh, this isn't this idea isn't mine originally, um, and I make no claims. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so you just sort of say, okay, which one am I going to choose? They're the same. Either one is the same. The end result is going to be the same. I'm damned, I'm damned. Okay, which one? Bang, I'll open the one on the right. Okay, why? Curiosity. Just wanted to see what's in there. You know, you open that, there's another couple of doors in there, right? That's essentially what we're going to, what we go through all the time in our lives. Now, I can stop and agonize over every last possible outcome in choosing between those two doors, okay? Um, but it's not going to change anything. Because I agonize, 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 and then I eventually have to open one of those doors. <laughs> and guess what? There's two more doors in there. <laughs> um, now, I would say that that's just a model of reality because, you know, the doors themselves are not over doors, obviously. I'm not trying to paint a picture where we literally standing in front of two doors all the time. But as um, entities trapped inside of the causal chain, that's how it works for us. It, ultimately, I have to decide whether or not I'm going to draw my next breath or keep talking. You see, I just drew breath, but I, can, I could have just as easily have kept talking instead of drawing breath. Um, as you can do that, you can force yourself to continue to talk even after you're more or less out of air. You want to actually draw breath, but you're actually dragging on the sentence a little bit longer just to make the point that you can actually keep going without actually drawing breath. That's a decision that has to be made. Um, so that's the context I took your question. There you are. You've got to make a decision. Your um, thrust is to condemn the decision that was made, whereas I'm saying make the decision and <laughs> step through the door and deal with the next one that's coming along. Um, the world is gonna just keep happening. Um, you have the option of checking out whenever you want to. Uh, that's not a dare, by the way. I'm just stating the obvious. Um, the possibility of suicide makes existentialists of us all. Um, if you don't, then start opening doors. <laughs> start pushing buttons or not pushing buttons and quit agonizing over it all. Um, you do your best under the circumstances. You gauge the information at your disposal. 
um, and you understand just how flawed you are as a human being, you make your decision. If you want to sort of sink down into your chair and go, oh dear God, this is simply crazy and too big, um, and if you feel the wrath of judgment, um, it's too much for you, then, well, there's always aesthetic contemplation, I suppose. Um, there's always checking out in as much as it's possible for a human being to do so in this life. You don't actually have to kill yourself, but we've all seen people who have checked out in one way or another, who just live atomistic lives. They just sort of, humanity doesn't interest me anymore. Um, but you have actually uh, set yourself a task of altering humanity. The, um, the project that you're undertaking is gigantic, and it's nothing less than altering the fundamental nature of humanity. So therefore, you are actually in the world. You're plugged into everything, and you've got to make decisions now every step uh, of the way, every second of every day from now until the day that you snuff it. <laughs> You've got to make a choice between those two doors. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. There's no option of just not doing anything. Well, again, I suppose there is, but that's not what you're doing right now. Provided you're dialed into the world, provided you're in this world, <laughs> you've got to do that. Decisions have to be made. If you're terrified of making the wrong decisions because it's going to m result in some hellish moral condemnation, well, okay, check out. <laughs> you don't have to check out by slashing your wrists, but you can check out by just saying, okay, uh, okay, world, I give up. Because you're definitely not doing that, Gary. You're definitely uh, intimately uh, attached to the world. Um, you're attached to the world existentially. Um, and again, this is the paradox of guilt. Um, I don't understand the world, I don't like it, it keeps happening, and I'm not doing enough to stop it from being so horrible. Okay, you want to deal with that, um, that's entirely up to you. And I'm not even saying that your approach is wrong. All I'm saying is, um, there is an alternative to that approach. There's an alternative to guilt-based ethics. There are many alternatives to guilt-based ethics. Um, you're just taking guilt to an extreme, and again, the, the denunciation and insults, it's losing its sting. Uh, well, actually, it lost its sting long ago. Um, but again, you're, you know, when guilt doesn't work, what do you do? You just keep piling it on harder. Um, if that doesn't work, well, what do you do? <laughs> you know? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. You deal with me, okay? Let's say that you you managed to talk me into abandoning my position completely. You've got seven billion more like me to deal with right after that. <laughs> um, if you like spinning your wheels to that extent, that's entirely up to you. Um, but what I'm saying is, if you continue down the road that you're going, um, uh, you will have um, done your bit, I guess, to essentially pull the teeth of... Um, the guilt that lies at the center of your own ethics. Um, saying, see where it leads? It, it's just it's just guilt that feeds upon itself, that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, you know, spiraling, um, increasing geometrically. Uh, guilt does seem to have that, uh, that capacity. You, um, you use the metaphor of uh, nuclear reaction, uh, your metaphor. And yeah, I believe that that's the sort of thing that... Uh, that does take place with guilt <laughs> until you actually try to look at the process, the mechanism itself. Uh, it eventually turns on whoever wields it. Um, and the thing is, the people who wield that tool generally think that they're doing it for the best of reasons. So, you know, uh, this isn't to judge anybody, but it's just to say that, that um, that's a road to nowhere, in my opinion. That is a road to nowhere, but it's a legitimate road, provided people wish to go go nowhere. And I, I don't even mean that judgmentally. There are people who apparently do want to go nowhere. Then go. I am not going to stop you. <laughs> um, all I'm saying is there are options to that. There are alternatives. That's it. I'm not saying that my ethics are better than yours or anything. 
All I'm saying is, the assumptions at the center of your ethical system have uh, consequences. And if, you can, if you're willing to accept those consequences, then fine. Um, there are those of us who aren't willing to accept those consequences. Um, and, well, you don't have an answer to that except more guilt, more insults, more denunciation, more implications of being just plain evil. Personally, I believe you can keep this up for the next 40 years. I believe that that's your personality. I hardly know you, by the way, but I get that impression that this is just going to keep going forever. Um, which is, I guess, why I'm probably engaged uh, in a conversation with you. Um, it's the fact that that fascinates me. Because I believe that um, guilt is the biggest stumbling block uh, towards growth uh, in terms of um, the human condition in general. Uh, we may not be ready to dispense with it, but I should think it's about time we started casting around, at least, for alternatives to it. <laughs> um, that's why I like uh, watching everything that you produce, pretty much. That was a nice thing of me to say, wasn't it? <laughs>